Ready now, uncensored, starring Mike Patterson. Please welcome Mike Patterson. to be here. Yeah. How you doing, Toronto? Yeah. So my name is Mike Patterson. I'm from Montreal, uh, but I'm not French. Yet I am very well integrated in French culture. Uh, I don't know if you can tell. It's uh, my mullet. Huh? Huh? Yeah. I spent $60 on this. Yeah, I have a mullet. It's a uh, business and front party in the back. Uh, yeah, but it's actually more of a, a skullet. Uh, as you can see, it's like, uh, yeah, it's nothing up front. Just party in the back. Uh, so I'm only party in the back. Maybe I'm just Greek. Hey, because, uh, yeah, the Greeks, there's a stereotype. Uh, they like souvlaki. Uh, that's an anal sex joke. All right, so uh, before I start my special, uh, is anybody here uh, in the crowd an American? Do we have any Americans in the crowd? Because I don't trust Americans. Actually, it's not all Americans I don't trust. It's actually one American in particular. I'm talking about uh, Michael Phelps, the Olympic swimmer. You know this guy? Yeah, Michael Phelps won 10 gold medals in swimming. Like, I don't think any human can do that. I think he's a cheater. I think he's on fish steroids. You know how I know this? You know how I know this? Because the way Michael Phelps talks. Have you ever heard him talk? He's like, well, I'm very good at the swimming. I can swim forwards, I can swim backwards, I can swim like this. One swim in the water, not even unstoppable. So I'm not American, I'm of Irish descent. Yeah, yeah, and I, I'm proud, but I'm not, I'm not too proud. I'm not like super proud, like I won't ever use Irish spring soap. <laughs> Like, who came up with the brilliant idea to name a soap product after the Irish? You know, the fresh Irish morning feeling when you're waking up under the table of the bar, your eyes bleeding. Irish Spring. Calling your soap Irish Spring? That's like naming a toothpaste British mouth. You know what I mean? You apply the fluoride and then your teeth fall out. Or you come out with a deodorant named French Armpit. You're like, ha ha! Smell my pet! It smells like a river in Paris! <laughs> so uh, just, just to get things straight with the studio audience, I, I do have a girlfriend. Yeah! Yeah, thank you! Yeah, you should be happy about that. I am the last thing you want at the end of the night hitting on you. Uh, <laughs> I'm very lucky I'm dating a farm girl from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Yeah! And we live together in Montreal, which is awesome, because French chicks don't want to date me. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but there's a stereotype about French women that they're easy. This is not true. French women are not easy. I have tried to date them. They're, I'm always like, bonjour. And they're always like, no. <laughs> no. No, Mike, no. And I'm like, pourquoi? And they're like, they throw a ball de fat. <laughs> Which means bald and fat in French. In case you don't speak French. My girlfriend is a farm girl from Alberta. I am a vegetarian. Yeah, I don't eat meat. I know I don't look like I don't eat meat. This guy's staring at me, he's like, that's the fattest freaking vegetarian I've ever seen! I know what you're thinking, bro. You're like, that guy eats a lot of salad! Which I do, right? I love salad, it's the best, man. Oh my god, I just eat croutons that are the size of my head. Uh, oh man, this is a true story, bro. For my birthday, my girlfriend, she got me a crouton maker for my freaking birthday. I freaked out, man. I was like, what, crouton? I wake up, it's my birthday. I'm like, what's going on? It's my birthday, where's my present, right? You're like you do, everybody does on their birthday, right? I go into the living room. What is in the living room? This giant machine, and out comes this giant crouton. I'm like, crouton? maker for me? No! I freaked out, bro. I was like, what the? It's a crouton maker for me! Da-da-da-da-da! Da-da-da! 
Turns out it was a bread maker. I didn't know. I got her a present too. Got her the Kama Sutra. It's a book. Ah, the Kama Sutra is a mysterious book written by ancient Indian sex masters about positions. And I got it for my girlfriend. I didn't get it to uh, spice things up in the bedroom. Uh, I got it to prove it to her that when she just lies there, that is not a position. <laughs> Nowhere in the book Kama Sutra does it read position 246, the starfish. <laughs> just lie on your back with your legs and arms splayed wide open. Make sure your eyes are closed so you can't see the fat, bald guy with the comb of a mullet plowing you like he does every Tuesday night. Two people. The rest of you starfish, that's okay. Uh, I live with my girlfriend, but we're not married. The thing is, I love my girlfriend. She's cute as a button. She's logical. I love her to bits, but I don't know if I want to marry her. She's from Alberta. That's like the Texas of Canada. I cannot have some kind of country western wedding. I'm sorry. You know, you just got like, oh, you got a little girl. She's got a pillowcase full of rose petals. She sprinkles them along the garden path and then leads us over to the marriage cow. And then we start drinking the milk of fertility. I'm like, what? No! I do not want to get married that way. I grew up watching a lot of 1980s uh, professional wrestling. So uh, I need some lasers at my wedding. Thank you. I need pyrotechnic firework explosions going off when I celebrate my nuptials. Like, if I had enough money, I would hire Michael Buffer, you know, the announcer dude from WrestleMania and boxing, to be the announcer dude at my wedding. It would be the best, you know? He'd be like, for the dozens in attendance, and for the father of the groom, who is watching from 500 feet away, due to the restraining order, let's make room for the groom. Weighing in at 235 pounds, even though he is a vegetarian. Let's remember that beer is not meat, folks. Coming down the aisle in the pink and blue tuxedo. Iron Mike Patterson. It's your final countdown. I got a pretty sweet mullet, hey? Is the way I need to get married. I love this job, man. I love doing this. And one of the biggest reasons I love doing this is because I don't have to wake up in the morning. I hate it. Are you with me? Yeah, you guys wake up early. I hate, ah. Uh, you know when you got like an alarm clock and it goes, eh, 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 you know? Like, that does not wake me up, right? If I hear, eh, eh, I just incorporate that into whatever dream I'm having. You know what I mean? You're just walking along and a dream's like, don't worry, Mr. President, brother. We're gonna get your approval ratings up, brother. It's gonna be, oh yeah, by the way, I'm Hulk Hogan in my dreams. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, don't worry about it, brother. Ah. Uh, we're gonna get this done, brother. I'll sit here, eh, 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 eh. It's like, oh, it's the Decepticons. Get down. <laughs> get Optimus Prime on the phone. <laughs> you better call Sigourney Weaver. She owes me a favor. <laughs> and I just do that for the rest of the afternoon. Um, so I am a sexual being, and I'll, I'll, I'm, I know some of you are, uh, you know, like, like worried about my sexuality. You're like, oh, this guy's so overtly sexual. And I will talk about it, because I'm allowed to talk about my sexuality. Uh, I'm a man, I've been in a long-term relationship. I have sex four times a year, and I'll admit it. I, will, I want to talk about this. I think we should all talk, I, four times a year? Oh yeah, 
my birthday, her birthday, New Year's Eve, and wild card, which is the greatest night of all. Every year, my girlfriend gives me a briefcase with a contract in it, and it says sex and a date. And I fill it out every January 2nd. Uh, <laughs> it's very bad, but uh, it's hard to keep stuff fresh in the bedroom. Like, uh, we've been doing role-playing. Do you guys know about role-playing? It's awesome. We've been role-playing, my girlfriend and I, and uh, basically, uh, she's doing the sexiest character I have ever seen. She, is, uh, she plays a woman who doesn't want the sex. <laughs> but I know that she's role-playing, right? You know? Like, I'll come home after a gig, I'll be like, honey, I'm home, time for sex. And she'd be like, what? It's two o'clock in the morning, I have to go to work tomorrow. And I'm like, are we role-playing right now? Cause this is sexy. She's like, no, I'm not role-playing, I'm tired. I have a presentation tomorrow, what are you doing? I'm like, you are deep in character tonight. <laughs> Sometimes we role-play for months. <laughs> I went to uh, Metcalf, Ontario recently. Very glamorous, very glamorous. Uh, I headlined their mushroom festival, and it was the most disappointing mushroom festival I have ever been to, by the way. I just sat down at this show eating mushroom after mushroom. I did not get high at all. It was just a farmer's harvest. I was like, what is this? And the only high I got was from the poop I had the next morning. <laughs> from the fiber. <laughs> I'm also available to go uh, talk to the kids at the, the schools if you need me. Uh, which is great. I always go to the, I, I love, it's a great job. You go to the high schools, you're like, yeah, stay in school, bitches. And then they give you money and you leave. It's a great job. But I don't know if it's, uh, if it's my career is getting worse or the school system is getting worse. But uh, I used to perform in nice uh, high school auditoriums. Uh, just recently, I've been performing in a lot of high school cafetoriums. I had no, do you guys know what a cafetorium is? Yeah, okay, I'm glad. I was like, yeah, it's half cafeteria, half auditorium in the same room. I was in Grand Prairie, Alberta, and some guy's like, yeah, I know what it is, it's half cafeteria, half crematorium in the same room. I'm like, no! You can't feed your children dead people! This will not cut costs. It's cafetorium, it's half cafeteria, half auditorium in the same room. I'm like, what are you gonna try and save money on next? And be like, hey, can I get some directions to your cafetorium, please? Sure, it's right next to the bathroom of Brary. <laughs> you get it? Bathroom of Brary? <laughs> All right, it's dumb, I know. <laughs> bathroom of Brary is dumb. But uh, if you gotta go number two, you got something to read. <laughs> huh? Come on. Uh, it's good to be on television. Uh, it's good because uh, a lot of television shows suck. Uh, like it's all reality shows these days and I can't, I can't stand. I remember the, the first reality show ever, Survivor. This was like a billion years ago and I'm just like, what is this? This isn't a real show. This isn't reality Survivor. You know what would be a real reality show? How about Welfare Survivor? <laughs> You know, you get 20, 20 dudes, put them in some dilapidated old ghetto apartment. They get 400 bucks a month to survive on. And every week, one person from the tribe gets voted into the job market. He's like, what? Where's my check? <laughs> 